hello everyone welcome to my channel so in this tutorial we are going to talk about partitioning strategy in data warehousing so in the previous lecture we have seen the different schemas in data warehousing and their advantages and disadvantages over each other so in this lecture we are going to see what is partitioning and why it is very important while designing the data warehouse system so without further ado let's get into it so the partitioning is done for enhancing the performance and provide the easy management of the data. So the partitioning also helps in balancing various requirements of the system. It optimizes the hardware performance and simplifies the management of data warehouse by partitioning each fact table into the multiple separate partitions. So what we're doing here is splitting up one table which contains billions of records and we're going to split them up to improve the query performance such that the retrieval process of the data will be quicker as compared to the one fact table without partitioning. So in this lecture, we will discuss different partitioning strategies. So the first point is why the partitioning is very necessary. So the first one is easy management. So what does it mean really? So the fact table in a data warehouse can grow up to 100 of gigabyte in size and can contain billions of records. So this huge size of fact table is very hard to manage as a single entity. So therefore it needs to be partitioned for improving the performance. The next point is to assist backup and recovery. So if we do not partitioning the fact table, then we have to load the complete fact table with all the data. So partitioning allows us to load only as much data which is required for on the regular basis, which will be the current data. So it will reduce the time to load and also enhances the performance of the system. And our next important topic is to enhance the performance. So by partitioning the fact table, the query procedures can be enhanced. So let's consider. In the first example, we haven't split up the fact table. So if you want to perform one query over it, so it will can the whole fact table, which is very time consuming process. So instead of that, if we split up the data according to some parameter, we can retrieve the data more quickly than the conventional method that we have discussed earlier. So it will mean the query performance will be enhanced. So it does not have to scan the whole data. So our next topic is types of partitioning. So there are two major types of partitioning, which is horizontal partitioning and vertical partitioning. So we will discuss them in detail. So the first one is horizontal partitioning. So what do you mean by that? There are various ways in which fact table can be partitioned. So in horizontal partitioning, we have to keep in mind the requirement for manageability of the data warehouse. So there are so many points we need to cover in case of horizontal partitioning. So the first type is partitioning by time into equal segments. So in this partitioning strategy, the fact table is partitioned on basis of the time period. So let's consider year wise. So hence each time period represent a significant retention period within the business. So for example, if the user queries for month to date data, then it is appropriate to partitioning the data into monthly segment. So we can reuse the partition tables by removing the data in them. So let's consider if the user is consuming the financial data for reporting purpose, we will partitioning the data quarterly so that the user can access the data quarterly instead of scanning the whole data. The next type is partition by time into different size segments. So this kind of partition is done where the age data is accessed infrequently. So it is implemented as a set of small partitions for relatively current data and the larger partitions for inactive data. So let's consider, for example, the current data will be partitioned into monthly basis and the historic data will be partitioned yearly instead of monthly because historic data will not be accessed frequently. So it is very convenient to partition them into the yearly manner instead of monthly. Our next type is partition on the different dimension. So the fact table can be partitioned on the basis of dimensions other than time. So in the previous two types, we have discussed 
the partitioning on the basis of time dimension. In this type, we can partition them instead of time, such as product group, region, supplier or any other dimension which is present in our data warehouse. So we will discuss it with some simple example. So suppose a market function has been structured into the distinct regional departments like on the state by state basis. So if the region wants to query an information captured within its region, so it would prove to be more effective to partition the fact table into regional partitions. So this will cause the queries to speed up because it does not require to scan the information that is not relevant. So for example, in a multinational corporation, the data needs to be partitioned according to the different regions. So if the person sitting in the US does not need data other than the US country, so it makes sense to partition the data according to the region instead of time. So in that case, we will partition the data on the basis of the region. So you have to remember some points clearly. So the query does not have to scan irrelevant data which speed up the query process. So this technique is not appropriate where the dimension are unlikely to change in future. So you have to make clear that the dimension should not change frequently. And the last point is if the dimension changes then the entire fact table would have been repartitioned. So if you want to partition it on the other dimension you have to do the repartitioning again. Our next type is partition by the size of table. So when there are no clear basis for partitioning the fact table on any other dimension then we should partition it on the basis of their size. So we can set the predetermined size as a critical point. So when the table exit the predetermined size a new table partition is created. So let's consider if you want the size of a table of 1 gigabyte. So if the table exceeds the 1 gigabyte of storage, it will create a new partition and stores the data in it. It is very simple to understand. But you have to make sure that this partitioning is very complex to manage. And it requires the metadata to identify what data is stored in each partition. So you can't predict that because you are only partitioning it on the size of the tables. And the last type is partitioning dimensions. So if the dimension contains large number of entries, then it is required to partition the dimensions also. So here we have to check the size of the dimension. So for example, consider a large design that changes over time. So if we need to store all the variations in order to apply comparisons, that dimension may be very large. So this would definitely affect the response time. So we have to partition the dimensions which contains a large number of records. So this was all about the horizontal partitioning and their different types in detail with some simple examples. So our next topic is vertical partitioning. So the vertical partitioning can be performed in these two ways. First one is normalization and second one is row splitting. So we will discuss it in detail. So the first one is normalization. So what do you mean by normalization? So normalization is a standard relational method of database organization. So in this method, the rows are collapsed into the single row. So hence, it definitely will reduce the space. So here is one example of normalization splitting. So here we have collapsed the rows into the single row. So this is the table before normalization and after normalization, we have collapsed it into single row. So it will definitely reduces the space consumption. And our last type in vertical partitioning is a row splitting. So what do you mean by it? So the row splitting tends to leave a one to one map between the partitions. So the motive of row splitting is to speed up the access to a larger table which contains billions of records by reducing its size. So the main point is while using the vertical partitioning you have to make sure that there is no requirement to perform a major join operation between two partitions. So this was all about the partitioning strategies in data warehousing and why it is very necessary to follow for enhancing the query performance as well as for easy management of the data. We have also seen the two major types of partitioning and their subtopics with some simple easy to understand examples. So if you like this video, please 
subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates thanks for watching